You might recall from last time that we looked at this final example of MVC, a model view controller architecture, and it pretty much boiled down to organizing things a little more cleanly in directories. And if I do tree, which is just a command that shows me the file system like this, we had a nice and neat templates directory, a public directory, and so forth. And the general idea was only put in the public directory, the files that really、uh, need to be public, and everything else should be nicely organized. But effectively, inside of this public directory, we had a whole bunch of controllers. Individual controllers that somehow required or included other files. But we really didn't get much more functionality than that. And in fact, we kind of had to implement this notion of views or templates ourselves with the extract function and a render function that we implemented ourselves. And as soon as we start doing this, we'll start to realize, we'll start to build up a wish list like, oh, wow, I wish. I wish I had a library for sending emails. I wish I had a library for querying a database. I wish I had a library for dot, dot, dot. And that's why these libraries exist. This is why people use Django with Python, because it just gives you more. It's why people use Rails with Ruby, because it just gives you more. It's why we'll use Laravel, because on top of PHP, it just gives you more. And just to tease you then for a moment, I'm going to go into a vhost directory, into a sample application using Laravel. At first glance, frankly, it's probably a bit overwhelming, because there's so many files, so many directories. But the important thing, and as we'll see, After a quick break, is to focus only on the most germane things to getting some work done initially, and that's going to be in the app directory. As you'll see in here, there's still a bunch of folders, but the ones I'm going to care about primarily are this. If I open up routes.php, notice as a teaser how this application is about to work. This is a re implementation in Laravel of the super simple, stupid course application that gave me week zero, week one, lectures, and the PDFs. I'm simply going to specify. And、the screen's a little cut off again. I'm going to specify the following that I want to define a route using HTTP get for slash. And whenever a user for this application visits slash on my website, I want to execute this anonymous chunk of code, namely return view colon make. So this means call a static method inside of a class called view, and make renders a template. That's called index, and it passes in a bunch of key value pairs, in this case, title. Meanwhile, if a user visits slash lectures, this code should execute, and the lectures template should get executed,、uh, rendered. Finally, if the user visits lectures slash something, where that something is, per the bottom here, a number,、uh, one or more decimal digits, then I want to render the lectures template passing in the title as well. So the end result. Is that if I actually pull up this application in my browser, the end result, whoops, the end result is exactly the same, albeit with slightly sexier URLs now. Now it's lecture slash zero instead of week zero dot php. But let's pause here. Let's take a two minute break. And when we come back, Tim's going to come on up and introduce us to the inner workings of Laravel and the kind of functionality we're about to get out of the box. All right, so、uh, now we're going to be taking a、uh, deeper dive into the Laravel、uh, PHP framework, which David mentioned. So, Laravel, the first place we're going to start is going to the, to the Quick Start and installing it via something called Composer. So, Composer is a package management system for PHP, similar to、uh, Gems for Ruby or PIP for Python or、uh, NPM for Node.js. Composer helps to manage all the different dependencies that Laravel depends on、uh, when, sort of under the hood, it uses a lot of the Symfony、um, and other PHP frameworks inner workings. And so we're going to use、uh, the, command line, uh, the command line that they give us here Composer create project Laravel Laravel after we've installed the Composer utility. Uh, which I've already done on the, let's see. So I'm using the CS50 appliance because this has all the、uh, correct PHP versions and MySQL and everything that we need to get started running. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the terminal here and jump into the、uh, vhost directory. And I'm going to paste this,、uh, can't do it that way. So, I'm going to SSH to, to the、uh, Linux instance that I'm running in the VMware. And I'm going to run this composer create project、uh, Laravel. And I'm going to change your project name to、uh, just example 
app.dev. And behind the scenes, this takes a little while the first time you're going to do it, but it's installing all of the uh, dependencies that you're going to need to run Laravel. So hopefully this does not take too long. That should just take a second. The first time that you do it, it'll take a few minutes probably because it needs to get everything. I have it all cached here. So now that we have example.dev, uh, what we're going to need to do to be able to access this in, in our Chrome browser is go ahead and jump into, we're going to sudo vi the Etsy hosts file. And we're going to go ahead and add a new line here with the IP of the 50 appliance, which is shown here in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, the 192168. And this might be different depending on your machine. So 192.168.69.128. Project example.dev. OK, save that. So now if we go to example.dev, we see the, let's see, oh, I was in the wrong directory. So let me go ahead and move the example.dev into the vhost directory. And now if we refresh it, we see that it says uh, forbidden, you don't have access. So we need to go into the example.dev directory in vhosts, and we need to uh, jmod to 0711, the example.dev, as well as the public, oh. oh, I did that wrong both times. So the the example.dev as well as the public directory that's underneath it so that it's able to get to the index.php. And now if we refresh, oh, we're still having problems. So inside the example public directory, if we list all the files, including the hidden ones, there's an HT access file. And this is used by Apache to help uh, determine for this specific directory where requests should be routed. So this also needs to be chmodded to 0644. And now you've arrived. So that was the quick install of, of Laravel uh, via the command line. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use something called uh, Samba. If you're not familiar with it, you can, if you, from the Finder menu, go to Go and connect to server. And you can go ahead and do smb colon slash slash and the IP address of the, of the Linux instance that we're running in VMware. And go ahead and connect to the server so that you can mount it as a file system and use it as if you were locally connected to it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this into an editor called Sublime Text. If you're unfamiliar, it is a really nice editor uh, that is available to, uh, to edit code files. Um, and so we're going to take a look at the directory structure for the project. So there's a few different folders in the top level. There's app, uh, which David has mentioned already. There's bootstrap, which are some files used internally by Laravel to bootstrap all the dependencies, load them all in, make sure that all the uh, magic methods are called properly to be able to there is the public directory, which is where all of our public-facing assets, such as the index.php, where requests are routed, images, uh, CSS files, JavaScript, anything that needs to be directly accessible by the world lives in the public directory. And then the vendor directory are all of the assets, or all of the is under the hood that does a lot of the heavy lifting that Laravel depends on. So typically in a public directory, uh, this is sort of what you'd see, the CSS, JavaScript, those files aren't there when you install the framework, but those are things that you'll likely want to add as you're building out your applications. Uh, the HD access file that I mentioned, and the index.php, which is the, uh, the front controller for the, wh where all the requests go through initially. So inside the application folder, these are the, there, there's actually a couple, uh, 
there are actually a, f a few different folders here. There's, there's a lot of them. And as David mentioned, it can be overwhelming at first. But you just want to concentrate on these specifically. So there is the routes.php, which is what we saw earlier to show that you can route a specific URL uh, and HTTP method to a certain um, either anonymous function, as David was using, or a controller, which we're about to go over. Uh, there's the config folder, which is where you set any application configuration that you need, um, such as database settings or any APIs that you might be dealing with if you're using something to send mail or if you're connecting to Amazon to store images. You would set all of those configurations in a central point in the application uh, so that it, it sort of conventions that everyone, as they're working on a team, you don't have to think about where is this. It's just you have a set place where it goes. So that would be in config. Controllers are the place in the application where you typically route requests. So the controller handles a lot of the application logic and sort of picks what, what the display of the screen is going to be, the, the views, and then also shells out to the different models which contain the data and pass those to the views. So you sort of, the controller is sort of the dispatcher for the requests, you know, what you're going to do with, with the data. Or with, depending on what the request is, what data should be shown and where do we get it from. And the views are typically just HTML, uh, maybe using a templating engine, as we're going to go over with the Blade templating engine that Laravel ships with. And then the other directories for right now, we're just going to sort of gloss over and not worry about. But those include tests, so unit test-free applications, uh, filters, storage. Uh, keep doing this. All right, jumping back over here. So the first thing that it comes with is this route get, and it does view make hello. So if we look in the views directory, we see that there is a hello.php, and that's where this you have arrived is coming from. But we can also change this to, so we can change this to hello. And now, if we try to go to a route that's not defined, we get this sort of stack trace as to, as to what went wrong with the application. But if we go to slash hello, uh, there's actually an internal server error. Um, so there is a little bit of magic going on behind the scenes in the CS50 appliance to make sure that you're able to name all these directories conveniently, uh, the name of the, so the example.dev that we gave. So we actually have to change one more thing in the ht access file. So we're going to go ahead and add this line, rewrite base uh, slash. And that basically is another directive. Uh, David, you can speak more to what the rewrite base does. It essentially corrects for what the server thinks is supposed to be the root virtual host. So specifying to ignore that by rewrite base slash addresses. Right. So now slash hello uh, works, works properly. So let's jump back over here. So along with just doing an anonymous function like this, there are, so this is just a uh, recap of the MVC I was just discussing. It goes into the routes and then shells out the controllers, and then which deals with the models and views and how all of that should be dealt with. So controllers are sort of help to centralize all of that. And you can access them via routes by saying route get. So we could say route get hello, and then the controller name, at, and a method name. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So we'll say route get slash hello, and we'll do a hello controller at uh, show hello. So in order for this to work, we need to add a file called hello controller.php. I'll go ahead and so it extends a base controller which uh, Laravel already ships with, which extends a controller which is sort of under the hood and does a lot of the stuff behind the scenes that helps controllers to manage all of this uh, state that's coming into the application. So the 
home controller, we said it would be named uh, show hello. And we'll just, instead of returning a view, we'll just return hello world. Oh, hello, con oh, I copied it. Hello controller. So hello world. So that is just a uh, really, really simple example of how you can create controllers. Now, if we wanted to do a uh, show post hello, so if we wanted to hit this with a post. So can anyone tell me what the difference is between a, a get HTTP request and when you might want to use one of each? Yes. So post shows up on the that's actually um, get that shows up right with the with the question mark and the, the query string basically that gets appended to the URL, whereas a post is used when. Right, so it is the post information, as you said, is kept hidden from the URL. So it doesn't show up in the URL, but it's typically associated with a form, like if you're logging in with a username and password. So uh, posts are associated with forms when you don't necessarily need to save that state somewhere, whereas get requests are typically if you are uh, going somewhere where you want it, if you're doing a Google search, for example, and you want to be able to bookmark that, you want the query string to have the the state of what your what your request was there. So the routes similarly let us define what if it's route post hello, we can say hello controller show post hello and return this was a post. So in order to do a post, we actually don't have a form here. So what I'm going to do is use an application that you might find really convenient when developing and testing your applications. It's called uh, a REST client. And the one I'm using is uh, Coco REST client. And you can do a Google search for this. And it's free to download. And if you're not on a Mac, they, there's just Google search REST client, uh, HTTP, and you'll find there's plenty of them out there. But Basically, we can take this URL that we want to hit and say method post and hit submit, and this was a post shows up. So we're sort of spoofing and saying that this was a post request coming from this thing, this, uh, this REST client. And in the last class, when we were discussing the request headers that you can look at in the, in the console, here you can set any of the things that you'd want to deal with. Uh, so the content type, the uh, expect, uh, what the different headers are essentially that you're saying that this is where it's coming from. So as to be able to test your application or, or figure out what's going on uh, behind the scenes, you can sort of act like you're a browser and sort of uh, change what you're actually doing. So. So the other options with controllers are to specify not just get or post, but you can also specify controller, which, so in this case, the example is route controller user hits user controller. And in this case, it does some magic behind the scenes so that if you prefix a route with get or post, so if I went ahead and did public function get hello, and I had this as, or sorry, get, get index, and had route controller hello, hello controller. Then this would go ahead
and return depending on what the HTTP verb is here. So the ones that we're familiar with, get and post, but there's also uh, two others called put and delete. And you can think of get as sort of analogous to, uh, to querying a database. Get is sort of like a selecting from the database. Uh, post is creating a new entry in the database. Uh, put is updating something that's already there, and delete would be sort of like deleting a row. So that's actually called uh, CRUD, create, read, update, delete, and that's a very common pattern when building out uh, web applications. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit more into some of the uh, where we can go with uh, displaying data on the screen. Uh, so, um, did you go over the blade? Uh, sorry. Okay, got it. Okay. Sorry, just one second. Um. Okay, so Laravel ships with a, uh, as David did earlier, a view make, and you can render these views, which are essentially PHP files in the views directory. But what you can also do is use, uh, a templating language to not have to write all this, all these PHP code inlined in your HTML. So that ends up being sort of a mess if you have markup um, mixed in with, with your, your PHP code. Uh, that's something that's sort of frowned upon and has been one of the reasons that people don't really, uh, the, the PHP has gotten a bad name, I guess you could say, over the years for, for instances where you're not separating your application logic from the display. So Laravel actually ships with a, a really nice templating engine called uh, was it Blade. Uh, really nice templating engine called Blade, which gives you nice syntax for rendering different chunks of logic that are coming from your controllers. So we're going to go ahead and do return view hello. Uh, sorry, view make hello. And we're going to go ahead and pass it an array with, uh, we're going to do course and intro to Laravel. So now we change, so the, the blade templating language actually doesn't use just .php as the extension. It uses .blade.php. And so instead of you have arrived here, we can actually use curly braces and say course. I'm s there we go, setting the syntax to blade. So you can see it's nicely highlighted. And we'll take a look. So intro to Laravel. So what this helps us to do is when we're querying data from our database, we can pass it into a view and then use different uh, constructs of the, of the blade templating language. So here's the blade documentation. So you're used to, for example, a for each loop having, you know, open or it would look something like for each item as items as item and then you would have sort of a, a loop like that. The blade allows us to have these really nice um, for each users as user. Uh, how do I, uh, there we go. So you can see nicer syntax, less curly braces, and it also, as opposed to doing the HTML uh, escape character, it 
it deals with all of that for you if you use a, uh, a triple, triple brace on the outside. So I, how, how far do you think I should go into the blade stuff? I think that's probably, I think that's sufficient. And especially next week as we start to dive into the first project, we'll walk you through some of these steps as well. So I don't think it'd be bad to transition to the eloquent discussion.